Here are 10 of the best from the last month, and we aren't covering the top trending stuff that everyone knows about, like show player and menu, creature behavior generator, or animation cue fix. Check all of them out though. First, we have 4th Unknown's Flame Atronach. And I know what you're thinking, Mitch. It's one of the most endorsed mods of the month. You just said blah, blah, blah. Listen, we just need it for a base, you twat. Fourth Unknown has provided a beautiful mesh and texture package here, and he can download optimized textures from Xtudo. But I still really love the original model as well. I don't want to say goodbye to it for a whole playthrough. So that's where the mod Flame Atronach Variance by Aowen comes in. This makes it so when you summon a Flame Atronach, either of these two variants can spawn. You can also use an optional base object swapper patch to have hand-placed versions of Fourth Unknown's model throughout the game world. This mod is a little complicated to install, so let's break it down real quick. First, you would install Fourth Unknown's mod, then overwrite or merge it with Xtudo's textures, if you want those. Then, after you download Aowen's variant mod, you'll get an ESL flagged ESP and a .bat script that you'll want to cut and paste into the data folder for Fourth Unknown's mod. Finally, you'll want to run the .bat script simply by double-clicking on it, and it will automatically rename the mesh and texture files to work alongside Aowen's new ESP. I love a best of both worlds situation. I've always found Skyrim's boss battles to be somewhat lacking. And sometimes you aren't given much incentive to explore large parts of Skyrim's world, like some of the optional Dragon Priest tombs. These next two mods help with both those problems. First, we have Cult of the World Eater by Maleficus32. This mod gives Alduin a set of various buffs like extra health and magic resistance for each living Dragon Priest, and defeating the priests in Skyrim slowly chips away at those buffs. This really gives you a reason to go out into the world and defeat each of the Dragon Priests before facing Alduin or skipping them for a much tougher fight. And you'll need to kill at least a few. The health regen on this fucker is absurd if you haven't killed the right priests yet. Why won't you die? Now, Zamio's Cult of the True Dragonborn was inspired by Maleficus's mod for Alduin, and it does the same thing, but for Mirak and the Dragon Priests on Solstheim. Although, defeating Valok the Jailer will actually give Mirak an extra buff instead of taking one away. That's some lore-based immersion right there. You can check out this video for lore on Valok and Mirak. The buffs are a little bit on the basic side since they mostly just buff health, health regen, and magic resistance. Both of these are flagged as ESL, by the way, but it's a great idea to help connect some of the bigger enemies throughout Skyrim. Of course, if you're going to be hunting down Dragon Priests again, then you'll need to spice those fights up a bit. I've lost count of how many times I've killed them after over a decade of Skyrim. Luckily, Mihail has us covered with talkative Dragon Priests. This adds over 30 new voice lines to named and unnamed Dragon Priests throughout the game world. Some of these named Priests have unique lines as well. I've been using the mod Talkative Dragons for years, which does something similar but for the Dove. It's a great immersion booster and can help make these fights feel fresh again. I'd recommend both together, personally. Let's have a listen. Ghosts, specters, all are before a Dragon Priest. Mahale also has relatively open permissions on this, so I imagine it won't be long before we see additional lines added or different voices for some of the unmasked priests altogether. Mahale has been on somewhat of a roll lately, and I can't believe how much I love these mods, but the Hanging Animal mods he put out this month are fucking spectacular. They go well along with the normal creature replacers to match each type, but something about this mod just makes so many small locations like inns and stalls feel so much more immersive, and immersion is a high priority for me. These cover chickens, rabbits, and add bantam guar to Solstheim. The level of quality on these is top notch. I probably love these mods more than I need to, but they are just this beautiful immersive detail and it adds a lot to me. But I also downloaded his fucking ant replacer from a few months ago, so maybe I'm not a good judge of what is technically necessary when it comes to modding. We haven't covered any animation mods yet, so at number 5, I'd like to highlight Dynamic Whirlwind Sprint by Skypea. 
This, of course, requires Dynamic Animation Replacer, which is now updated to Skyrim version 1.6.64 if you've been waiting for that, but it really brings a lot of new life to this shout. I use Whirlwind Sprint quite a lot in my playthroughs, both to travel more quickly and to reposition in fights, so having some animation variety is definitely welcome. There are different animations based on the weapon you're carrying and a selection of random ones that will play regardless. It's also compatible with Skypiea's smooth moveset. The tripping one really tickles me. I don't know if you were on the Nexus on that fateful day, January 5th, when Fusher, Pusher, Fucher, pronunciation is hard, posted about 20 different insanely good mesh and texture replacers all at once. God damn, every single one of these is perfection. There isn't time to go over each of them individually because they're a maniac, but I'll highlight a couple now and leave a link to their mod page in the description of the video. At number 7 we have an armor mod that stood out as a cut above the rest this month, and that's the Moon Monk Robes. Khajiit have really been getting the recognition they deserve lately. First we had the Lunar Guard armor last year, which is easily one of the best armor mods ever made, and now we get this light ninja style armor. There are a ton of color variations to go along with this, and as of the making of this video, the mod comes with a CBBE patch and there's a Himbo patch on the Nexus as well. A martial artist playthrough is something that I've yet to do, and this armor really inspires me to move it to the top of my list. That, or I'm not sure which follower I'd like to give these to. Inigo? Jizargo? Name your Khajiit follower of choice in the comments below. The next mod is one that I'm excited for a potential future of. At number 8 we have Skinwalkers, a werewolf mesh and texture replacer. This thing looks goddamn ferocious. There are two download choices for this, one regular black version and another that is covered in blood like she just made a horrible snack of some silver hand members. Or some innocent villagers. Your end draws near. Or a very large cow. <laughs> The only problem with this mod right now, I believe, is compatibility. If you're using things like Moonlight Tales, Growl, or Diverse Werewolf Collection, I'm still trying to figure out just how well this would overwrite their adjustments to textures as well as any other mod that affects werewolves. But oh boy. A little compatibility, and this is my werewolf model of choice, and it isn't close. Is it just me, or were there a fuck ton of good mesh and texture replacers this month? There are a few different replacers out there for the Night Mother. Some of them keep to the original look, while others are a bit, well, looter. But not this one. Mandragora Sprouts posted this new replacer recently, and it is spooky. Aptly named Night Mother, a Chad level move to put all other replacers in their rightful place beneath Mandra's proverbial foot. This replacer is properly terrifying and truly looks like an ancient, desiccated corpse. The way God. I mean Todd, intended. She'll be haunting my nightmares for months. There's one more mod for our countdown for January, so this seems like a perfect time to not talk about that and instead introduce our honorable mention. I wanted to talk about this mod because it's a real feel-good story. I feel like life has been a shitstorm for everyone the last few years, and even the Skyrim modding community isn't without its fair share of drama. But about a week or two ago, the Reddit user Aladian Blue posted on the Skyrim mod subreddit. Their cat of 14 years just passed away, and they were wondering if anyone would be able to make a mod that would let them travel the world of Skyrim with their cat as a follower. My god, the community answered. Basically that same day, the mod author Hypnoseph used Mihail's cat mod to make Furpot, named for Aladian's late pet. This adds a cat follower to Dragon's Reach for you to meet and have travel with you. I lost a cat of my own over this past month, and I know how absolutely devastating it can be. This is the kind of wholesome shit that makes a community great to be a part of. We wouldn't still be playing this game 10 years later if it wasn't for all the great mod authors out there. Problems can arise, but it can also be so good. I imagine you could take this mod and edit the name in the creation kit or xedit, or swap the mesh and texture out for anything else from Mihail's mod for your own cat if you're so inclined. Barrels. You've seen them. You've opened them. You've upgraded them with Smim. But despite being the all-powerful dragonborn, able to fell immortal lizards and pick up every sweet roll you see, you cannot move them. If you've spent any amount of time in a Bethesda game, you'll be familiar with just how hilarious the game can be, often accidentally, and especially when game physics get involved. I'll always support more physics, and Exaldrin is bringing it to barrels near you. 
Their mod, Havoc Enabled Barrels, lets you pick up and push these barrels to anywhere your heart desires. You can even hit them with the classic... Foos! Okay, the shout is a little underwhelming, but you can kick them around all day, and I think that's pretty fun. So that was like 20 mods, not 10. But who's counting? The guy who makes the video titles? Let me know if I missed any great mods from this month in the comments below, and like, share, and subscribe to help support the channel. She's just a fledgling thing, but once I have more videos up, you can click on one of these handy pop-ups to find more Skyrim content. Happy adventuring.